Now, if you've ever built a website and you want to include RSS feeds in that website, but you didn't know how to do it, today's video sponsor makes it incredibly easy. We're going to take a look at Themiles Feedsy. We're going to see how to set it up, some of the use cases for it, and just some of the options we have available. Now, this is a sponsored video, but as always, no opinions are going to be expressed. I'm simply going to demonstrate how this all works, and you can make a more informed decision for yourself. So first of all, you may be asking, why would you use Feedsy and what kind of use cases do we have? Well, there are lots of different options, but you use a couple to get you started. One example is if you want to include affiliate links or referral IDs as part of a product list using a feed. You can use the options inside Feedsy to be able to handle that and automatically add that information to the end of the URLs. You may want to pull in information and then spin it through an article spinner using AI to reword exactly what's being said and have a different version available. This is great if you've got multiple websites and you share the same information, but you want to make each article a little different. You could use an article spinner and Feedsy to handle that side of things. If you have a feed of Amazon products, you could use this to advertise them on your website. There are lots of different use cases, but I'm going to touch on some of the basics to get you up and running to start off with. And then I would recommend you explore the actual website itself to get a real feel for how this all works. Now, there's a free version of Feedsy and a pro or premium version. We're going to be looking at the premium version in this video. But if you want to try the free version out, it'll be linked in the description below and you can get a feel for how that all works. And if you need to upgrade to the pro version, you can see what kind of things you can do. So once you've installed the plugin, you've got a couple of new options available under the Feedsy menu. You can import your posts, you can deal with feed categories, and there are a lot of settings we can configure. Let's take a look first of all, though, how we can set up feed categories and get some content into our actual pages, and then we'll move on to some other options. So let's choose feed categories, and let's add our first category in. We'll give it a name, and now we can drop the link in for the feed that we want to use. In this example, I'm using one of my pages on one of my sites, so all I need to do is hop over and I'll copy the URL, I'm going to go back to Feedsy and we're simply going to paste that in the category feeds option. All we need to do now is make sure that we have the word feed at the end of it if we're using a WordPress website, which in this example I am. So just add feed at the end, job done. Now you can have multiple different entries inside here and all you need to do is separate them by using a comma and then put the next one in, again making sure that it ends in feed and then you can just add that in. Now for this example, I'm only going to use the one so once we've got everything in place, all we need to do is hit publish. And there we go. We've now added our first category in. So if we go back and take a look at our categories. You can see this shows us the name of the category, the slug we can use for it, and we can also validate and clean this. So if we want to make sure we've got no URLs that are a problem, we can click validate and clean, and there we go. Nothing has been removed because everything is perfectly fine. Okay, so now we've done that, how do we put this onto our page? Again, pretty simple. Let's head over to our pages section, and I've already created a page ready. So what we're going to do is we're going to add something in. We're going to come over and we're going to add a new row. We'll set this to be wide width. Then we're going to click on the plus, and we're going to search for Feedsy, and choose the Feedsy RSS feeds. Now this allows us to do two things. We can easily just drop in a URL if we wanted to. So for example, if we hadn't created a category, we could drop in that same URL, making sure that again, it ends in the word feed, and then we could load that feed in. Alternatively, we can click the down arrow and we can choose any of the categories we've created. So in this example, CSS tutorials, we'll select that. Again, we can choose to validate or we just click on load feed. And there we go. That's our feed now loaded in. So once that's loaded in, we now have more options on the right hand side so we can configure and customize the feed and how we see it and the kind of information we're going to see. Let's take a look at that next. So we look on the right hand side, we've got three different sections. We've got our content styles and advanced. So first of all, if we take a look at our feed source, you can see this is pulling in the feed we've just added in. If we wanted to load the feed in for any reason, we can click that and it'll refresh and load the feed in if we're not seeing it. We can drop in a message that if there's nothing in this particular feed category, we can drop a message in to tell people there's nothing available currently. We can then choose the number of items that we see. So again, you see we've got a nice simple sliding scale. So if we only wanted to show two inside here, we can use the sliding scale. Bump that up and show six. And you can see we now have six items inside here. We can then choose things like sorting order. So we can set these to be titles or dates. It's entirely up to us how we do this. Next, we've got the feed caching time. This allows us to choose between one hour and 15 days to go back and check if there's new content on that RSS feed link. Choose whichever you think is the most relevant. We'll leave that as 12 hours. 
item options, we can now choose several other options. How do we want to handle links? Do we want to open them in a new tab or in the same tab? I would recommend the same tab because you're dealing with accessibility. It's much better to not open additional tabs. You can see we can also set things like whether well, this is a nofollow link, yes or no, so you can handle that side of things. And you can also limit the number of characters in the actual title itself. So for example, if we set this to 30, you can see that now cuts the characters down in the title. You kind of get the idea. If we set zero, it'll show nothing at all. And if we leave it empty, it'll show the entire title. You can also choose to display or hide the description. So depending upon the kind of thing that you're looking to display, you can choose exactly what you do and don't want to show inside you. And you can also set the character limit for the description. So for example, we may say we only want to put 50. You can see that cuts it down inside there. Again, if we leave that empty, that will show the full description for us. Next up, we've got the filter items option. And this allows us to filter information, how it's displayed, if it's displayed, and so on. So for example, you can see only display if a selected field contains something. So we can choose what fields, how they're containing information, and so on, and show or hide based upon that parameter. So for example, we may only want to show any post that has CSS in the title. Currently, you can see we've got six titles. So what we can do is we can simply pop in CSS, and that will now cut out anything that doesn't include CSS in the title. Alternatively, you can change this to the author or the description. So you can choose how you want to handle this kind of option. And again, we can choose then for excluding if a selected field contains something. So you can use positive and negative options. And again, you can choose things like showing from date ranges. So you only show something between a certain date range. You can set the start and the end dates there as well. So pretty cool, pretty simple to use. And under advanced, we can do things like add additional CSS classes, and we can give this block a name should we want to. Coming back up then to the style tab, you can see we can choose image options. So currently this is showing the sort of little symbol, but we may want to sort of use a fallback image. So let's say we say that, we'll say yes with a fallback image. We can then choose what that fallback image is going to be. And then if nothing is found on the post itself, it'll use this fallback image, which you can see we've just chosen. So pretty simple to do that. You can choose your item options then. You can set how this, how big this is going to be. So let's just say we set this to 200. You can see we get a bigger version. You kind of get the idea. We can also set this to force HTTPS if for any reason it's not showing it, or we can choose to ignore and show the default image instead. It's up to you how you want to handle these things. Then we've got the feed layout. Now this is something that's only available in the pro version. So if you're using the free version, you'll have to put up exactly what we see on screen right now. But if you have the pro version, you do have some more options. We can choose from the default, which you can see. We can choose rounded or we can choose cards. It's up to us. And then we can set how many columns we want to display this in. So let's set this to be three in the card design. And you see that now puts exactly that in. We can then adjust the images to make sure they fit the way we want. And now we have our own design using the kind of setups we got inside Feedsy. We can also disable default styles if you want to. And again, we've got our advanced options. And finally, if we take a look at the advanced tab, you can see we've got the feed customization options. And this is where we can choose what we want to display. So for example, we may only want to put the author's name and not the date. So we can simply put in the word author. And you see now all that shows up is the author's name. If you only want to put the date in, you can see we can choose the date. Pretty simple to do. Let's get rid of that. It'll show everything. You can also set up when you're using multiple sources, so you, should you display additional information. So again, use the same kind of process. You can use commerce to separate the information as well. If you're dealing with WooCommerce or you're dealing with Amazon and things like that, where prices are available, you can choose to show that if it's available. And you can also display the feed title. So if you can take a look at the top, there's our feed title. I don't want that. It looks pretty ugly on you. So let's get rid of that. You can see now we just end up with the feed. And we can now customize the content around this using normal Gutenberg blocks. If you've got quite a lot of items, it's going to make sense. You can use the lazy load feed option. So you can choose that on the front end. It's a lazy, lazy load the content for you. Pretty cool. Your referral URL. So like I said earlier on, if you're dealing with some kind of affiliate marketing, you can use this to tag on your custom IDs, just custom information, and that'll be tagged on to the end of any links that are used as part of this particular category and the way you're outputting it. So that makes it a great way to be able to track everything if you have this aggregating information from something like Amazon and things like that. Pretty cool and pretty simple to do. Additional options allows you to use things like custom classes and so on. We're going to leave all that for now. So that's how easy it is to put your feed in. But that's not the only way we can deal with it. This is dealing with categories and so on. But there's other ways in which we can handle how we display content inside you. So let's take a look at another option next. Now, instead of using the Feedsy RSS widget, we can just as easily use shortcodes. And this allows us to do a couple of other things as well. So all we need to do is find and insert the shortcode. 
and then we need to write in the actual syntax we need to use. So we'll open this to the square bracket. So we're going to put in feedsy dash RSS space feeds equals open speech marks. Then we're going to put in the URL to our feed. Again, making sure that this ends in forward slash feed if we're working with WordPress. Then we're going to close our speech marks, close our square bracket. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click update. We preview this. And you can see now we get pretty much exactly the same as we just saw. But we get the option to start using switches with this to add additional information and control how things are displayed at the end of the actual URL link itself. Now I'll link to the document that gives you all the information about the different codes you can use to handle this. But let me just show you a simple example. Let's say we want to limit the number of posts that we see. We can use the max function. So we come back to our short code and before the closing square bracket, we'll pop a spacing. We'll say max equals, we'll open again speech marks. This time we'll say three and we'll close our speech marks out again. Let's update this and preview. And you can see now we only have three items being displayed. So if you want to keep using the short codes, you can use those. And as you can see, I've got a list of all the different options you can use to be able to customize this. Personally, I think it's a lot easier just to use the widget that we have that we can work with Gutenberg. But if you want to work with the short code, you have that and lots of options on how you can control everything. Now, the next option we have is to import posts directly into WordPress itself. And then we can handle those and deal with those exactly like any other post we'd expect to see as part of WordPress. We're going to come back into Feedsy. We're going to choose the option for Import Posts. We'll click on New Import. And now we've got some options to set up. So let's just include this and call this CSS Tutorials. Now we can choose the source configuration. So where do we want to grab the content from? So again, we're going to use that link that we've got set up ending in feed. And again, if you want to have multiple ones inside here, you can do that. Alternatively, you can just use a feed category. So you can see we've got CSS tutorials. We could choose that from here as well. So we could use categories to organize everything. And then we can use this to import the posts in based upon those categories. So we're going to stick with just using the RSS feed source directly inside here. You can see that's now listed underneath. We can then come down to filters. So much the same as we saw earlier on, we've got another way now of choosing what we do and don't want to filter. So you can see display items only if the selected field contains a specific word. So again, let's just say the title contains CSS. You can also choose to exclude terms. You can see we can choose between title, description, author, and the full content itself. And we've also got those date ranges inside here as well. So we can limit the content we're going to pull in and display. Then we can choose to map the content. Now mapping the content just basically says the content we're going to pull in from our feed, how do we want to map that to standard WordPress fields? So you can see it does a pretty good job of pulling the most things in. You can see we can choose just a post as a post type, but if you had a custom post type, you could use that here. Then we've got post taxonomy. So for this example, we're going to choose our taxonomy called CSS tutorials. The post status, we'll leave this as published, but you could also just set it as draft just to make sure that everything's in place before you publish it. And then we've got the mapping option. So you can see we can choose the post title, date, and content, and featured image. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this completely. We'll choose the insert tag, and we can choose what tags we want to pull in. So you can see we've got item title, author, item date, and so on. Let's say the title. You can see that pulls the right information in. The post date, again, insert our tag, and choose the post date or item date. It's up to you. Then we can choose the content. So we're going to choose the content option. And for this, we're going to use item full content to pull it all in. So now you can add actions to this if you want to. So you can see we can leave this blank if we want to and just close it down, or we can add a new action in. So do you want to trim the content? Do you want to translate it to another language? Search and replace? Spin it up through Spinner Chief. So if you wanted to pull this content in and then spin that content into a different version, so rewriting it in a human format using Spinner Chief, you could do that. Just need to drop your API key and so on. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But we're going to leave this as it is. We're going to say we're happy with everything. We'll close that. We don't want to worry. Featured image, again, we can choose this and we'll say item image. And again, we've got options. So we can find that if for any reason we don't pull any images in, we could generate them with ChatGPT to have AI generated images automatically created for us. Again, you're going to need to have a ChatGPT account and connect that up in the settings of Feedsy, but the options there. We'll close that though and leave it as it is. And then we've got general feed settings. So here we can choose some options for how the content is handled after we pull it in. So do you want to auto delete this after a set number of days? Do you want to remove duplicate items? How many items do you want to pull in? So let's set this to something like six, like we saw earlier on. 
We'll choose a fallback image, so we'll say we'll pick this one and set default. So if we don't have an image being pulled in, it'll pull that in as the default image. And if you want to, you can also use automatic translation, so we could choose the option and then translate this to a different language. For this example, though, let's leave it as it is. All we need to do now is choose the option to either preview the import, save it, or save and activate the importing. For our example, let's just say save and activate importing. And that takes us over now to our import post option. You see, it tells us the name, it gives us the source or sources, the current status, the next time this is due to run. And you can see at the moment, this has never run, so nothing has actually been imported in yet. So let's hit run now. So that's found six articles, zero duplicates. It's imported six in for us. The six cumulative in total. So if you have multiple imports here, you can see exactly what's going on. And the status, we get a nice green check mark. Now if we go into our posts, you can see there's all the posts that have been pulled in. In this example, six posts that we told it to pull in. So the final thing I want to quickly look at are some of the settings and options we have available to control various different aspects. And in here, you can see we've got a lot of different options. You can see we've got our open AI, our Spinner Chief, Word AI, Amazon Product Advertising. So all you need to do is make sure you fill out the relevant information in any of those that you want to use, and then they'll be accessible and you can use them inside Feedsy and the content that you pull in and how you want to handle it. Then in general, for example, we've got a default fallback, so we can choose the image from here. We can disable the default style, you can delete the post. So the settings we have when we kind of pull content and we create these different port, uh, import posts, we can set those up to be default values inside here if we want to, and we can override them on an individual instance basis. If we come over to the headers, you can see if we want to use user agents, we can set that up inside here. Proxy, we can set up username, password, host, and the port. And then the miscellaneous, you can see we can choose the things like add canonical URLs. So you can see we've got a range of options to configure everything inside here. But hopefully what you've seen in this video is it's not that complex to get started, to pull content in in various different ways and display it either as posts as part of our site, or we can embed that into whatever design we want using any of the Gutenberg block options that we've seen, either short codes or the actual element stroke widget itself. If you want any more information, all the links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.